Isaiah chapter 7, verse number 17. The Lord shall bring upon thee, and he's talking to Judah, Jerusalem, and upon thy people, Israel. Talking to the king, talking to the people of Israel. And upon thy father's house. So this would be the, the kingly line. Days that have not come. From the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, even the king of Assyria. <clears throat> so Ephraim is definitely gone away. We read earlier in this chapter that Ephraim's even signed up with the enemy to try to put a new king in Judah. Ephraim is, is of the tribe, well, they're of Joseph, they're of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but the curse says, curse be that curse you. Even if you are of that family. And when you read the minor prophet there, you know, Ephraim's joined the idols, let him alone. Ephraim doesn't have a, a good uh, thing to be said for that. And any enemy that goes against Israel, and you need to learn that because from the day that God said that in Genesis chapter 12 to the present day. And then when the Antichrist comes and, and settles in the land. And starts killing Jews. That curse goes to him. And anybody who is against the Jew. And the millennium is over. Satan is loose. He gathers an army against uh, Jesus and the Jews. And God just sends, sends fire down. They're consumed. If there's any group of people that you are to leave alone. Is the Jew. And you say well Ephraim is a Jew. Judah and Jerusalem are doing right. Ephraim has no business messing with them. And it shall come to pass in that day, in that day, second advent, Lord Jesus Christ, that the Lord shall hiss for the fly, unclean animal. There's a God called Beelzebub, the Lord of the fly. That is in the uttermost parts of of the ridge of the rivers of Egypt. Well, there was a fly uh, plague brought upon Egypt when Israel was in the land. They were told not to go back to Egypt. Egypt's a type of the world. And for the bee, the bee is a nuisance. There's an army in the Bible where you know they're going to attack Israel, and God says, "I'll just send a hornet." And you get a hornet in your armor. You get a hornet that's coming after you and he's angry, you're running. You can't do much when bees are angry with you. But he says, the fly, the bee. Not plural. That is in the land of Assyria. The bee has a stinger. And they shall come and shall rest all of them in the desolate valleys. And in the holes of the rocks, and upon all thorns, that's under the curse, thorns are a result of the curse, and upon all bushes. Where are the people to get rid of them? They're making, the, the, the bee and the fly are making their home. No insecticide. No exterminators. Listen, man has had control since Genesis 2 over the animals. God made Adam, made man, he said he shall have dominion over the creation that already had been created. The first five days. Trees, sea life, animals that fly, and the mammals, and the land animals. <clears throat> Man has today. We can go out. We can spray our yard. We can have somebody come and treat our yard and get rid of all the ants, get rid of all the, the fleas and stuff like that. Here, the fly and the bee are overthrown man. 
and are winning the victory. In the same day shall the Lord shave with a razor that is hired. Namely, all right, hired, you, know, you pay money. It's to defeat Israel. Somebody was paid to fight against Israel. Namely, be by them beyond the river, by the king of Assyria, the head and the hair of the feet. And it shall also consume the beard. It's a complete from, from top to bottom. No remnant. Nothing left over. A complete destruction. It shall come to pass in that day that a man shall nourish a young cow and two sheep. Not much. Very rarely when you when you drive down a road and if someone has cows, they have more than one cow. When you see somebody have sheep, there's, there's usually more than just two sheep. And it shall come to pass for the abundance of milk that they shall give, he shall eat butter. Okay. Milk, butter comes from milk. You turn it. For the butter and the honey shall everyone eat that is left in the land. It's after an invasion. Not going to be much left if there's an invasion in the land. It's the diet of the of the prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ. It said in verse um, number 15, butter and honey shall he eat. Israel's been living high on the hog. Well, can't say hog. That's an unclean animal for them. You read all the parties that Jesus went to, all the feasts, and they rejected him? You know, America has had great abundance of food, and that's not going to last because we waste it. We take corn and we put it in a gas tank. We come up with pumpkin uh, cannons to see how far we can how far we can shoot pumpkins. We go to a restaurant and most of the food gets wasted into the dumpster. Then we lock the dumpsters up so the homeless people and those who don't have it can't get to it. We you know we call the law when somebody you know, goes in our yard and takes. But the law said, you know, you can go sit down and have some grapes. You just can't take any with you. But we're a Christian nation. And we violate the Bible. There's an abundance. And with abundance comes pride and comes turning away from God. And God's going to have to break your diet. There's only nations like India who are starving with multiple gods. And they're starving because the, the animals that they have there that they can feed off are their gods. They're so brainwashed. But if you were to go to an area where there's no money, no food, starvation certain periods of year when there's no growth or anything like that, and you bring the, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and a loving God that loves them and will answer prayer, they'll receive. Well, if you go to a fat nation, like America, and you stand on the streets and you proclaim the gospel, they'll just keep on going by, holding their donuts, holding their coffee, holding their pizza, holding whatever they got. You want to see a revival in America, you, you, you got to see the breakdown of America. You got to see where the food is going. Well, you got to rely on God. Today, they rely on money. After all, their money says, in God we trust. It doesn't say the God in the Bible. And it shall come to pass in that day that every place shall be where there were a thousand vines at a thousand silverlings. And that's a large price. It shall even be for thorns and uh, excuse me, for briars and thorns. That's the curse. Briars and thorns on the high-priced property. 
tells you one thing. No one's working it. It has been some time. Usually within a week, if you don't work a field, and it has rain, and the weather has been proper, and you need to go out there after a week, and then the weeds are all out there. That brown dirt that's supposed to be uncovered just for the plants that you want are now covered with greens and little flowers and weeds. And you got to go out there and pick them. You got to pick those weeds out of there, poke those weeds out of there, and you got to cultivate and all that. Here, you got briars and thorns. That takes a little time to grow. So it's a expensive land that someone's paid money for and it's not being worked. And that's by rejecting the one that was born, their Messiah. Chapter 7, verses 10 through 16. They rejected that virgin birth. They say, well, we be not born of fornication. They knew who Jesus was. Nicodemus came to Jesus. We know who you are. Jesus fulfilled the scripture, the first advent, 100%. 48 prophecies. And they knew the Bible. And they did. They knew who he was. They just chose not to receive him. They just chose to reject him. And this is the outcome. You ever see what Israel looks like in pictures today? And it's it's dirt. With arrows and with bows shall men come hither. Army. Because all the land shall become briars and thorns, unworked, no labor. You know how many wars have been fought over there in Jerusalem while the land is, is, is dead? But many wars. And on all hills there shall be digged with the meadow. There shall not come thither the fear of the briars and thorns. But it shall be for the sending forth of oxen and for the treading of lesser cows. So the unworked land is not going to be permanent. There's coming a day that the land will be worked. And it will be for cattle, it will be for oxen, it will be. But there's coming a day in the millennium that the Bible speaks, oh, the curse is removed, the blessing. There will be no thorns. There will be no nettles. There will be fruit. No briar. Fruit. Beauty. No thorns. Roses have thorns, but that's the result of the curse. The curse came upon man for rebellion against God. And when the Lord Jesus Christ sits in the millennium on David's throne, Beauty throughout the world. Beauty throughout this land. That is, you look at a picture today, dead. Why is the land dead? Who's there today? You got non-believing Jews. You got Roman Catholics in their hierarchy running around there. You got Arabians running around there. You got Ishmael running around there. You got Americans over there taking pictures. You got Japanese over there taking pictures. It, it's they're not going to Jerusalem because of God. They're going there. For a tourist market. And you go over there where the temple was. And here's this dumb of the rock. People will proclaim that they're of Abraham. Well they're of Abram. They're not of Abraham. And they worship Allah. Not God. Jesus Christ is not who he is. According to their religion. Like Jehovah Witnesses and the morons and all that. That land is defiled right now. That land is under a curse. Of rebellion against God. The city's not there. But oh, one day, like Ezra and Nehemiah, rebuilding and serving God and praising God and the land singing out. But not now. Not yet. Rebelling in your land, rebelling in your life will produce no fruit but thorns and thistles. And the, the Christian is told to bear fruit. And I'm not just talking about winning souls. Or to bear fruit, love, long suffering, that of the spirit. And you can't bear the fruit of the spirit if you're rebelling against God and you're dry and dead and thorns and thistles and everything junk is growing in your life. 
the parable of the sower. You know, the, the cares of the world. I, oh, I want, I want a good job. I want a good paycheck. I want a car. I want this and that. That's the cares of the world. That's the thorns. You're not going to get good life. You're not going to get a, a decent, proper life of growing fruit, of doing what God wants you to do. When you got fruits and rebellion in your life, and I mean not fruits, but you got thorns and and thistles and and briars growing in your life, you you can't. You can't do that. They gave Jesus Christ a crown of thorns. One day we'll give him the crown of crowns, of all crowns. You know, Christ Jesus will get all those five crowns that we will get. It'll be a wonderful day when we crown him as our Lord, God, and King. Then after the millennium, we'll look at New Jerusalem. Imagine what the new earth is going to be like with no curse. Given to as descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the land grant that God's given them, given them. Imagine a sower system without Satan, without the principality that the nations will be. That we could travel to any planet or any star with no curse, no Satan, no sin. And then inside the streets of Jerusalem, trees, a crystal river. When we are in complete obedience with God. This obedience with God we get curses. We get no fruit. Weeds. Junk. You know what you do with weeds? You pull them out and you throw them in a the garbage can and you just throw them over your shoulder. And hey, when the sun comes up the next day or even that day they just wither up and dry. You know what happens to your Christian life when, when you rebel against God? You just, you're poked out. You just wither up and dry. And then you die. The wages of sin is death. We die because we're sinners. You know why we won't die in New Jerusalem? Because we won't be sinners. 